This tranquil spot on the edge of a stunning jungle-covered island is the perfect escape in which to unwind and relax after the stresses and strains of Indonesian bureaucracy and the city. In the last four years since leaving England, we have crossed two oceans and sailed over halfway around the world. Our circumnavigation of the world is still on pause in Indonesia, on the edge of the Indian Ocean. What, what a mess. After the stress of being boarded and failing to deal with our visas in the last episode, we are in need of a break. city any longer than we had to so uh, we're just heading to an anchorage which is about 20 miles south of our anchorage in Padang and it should be a nice place that we can just catch up on some boat jobs catch up on some sleep and kind of get a, a regroup really as to what we do next From our anchorage near the city of Badang, we are heading 20 miles south to a hopefully calm anchorage at Tubidak Island. There's absolutely no wind when we set off, but we've now got 20 knots apparent, so we are trucking up wind. There's a little bit of a chop though, so I wish that we'd got the dinghy on deck, but it should calm down once we get round these islands that we're just uh, working our way around. You can see how filthy the underside of the dinghy is. Well, Florence is about 10 times worse, so we're both looking forward to hopefully going somewhere where the water's clear and there aren't any crocodiles, so we can give her a good scrub. for a sale. I'm so glad that we came out today. We're both feeling so much better for getting out and just had yeah, really lovely conditions and a good reminder of why we're doing what we're doing. So nice to be somewhere that's different as well. This place is stunning. All the volcanic peaks are like absolutely covered in dense jungle. I'm hoping that there's going to be some hiking trails that we might be allowed uh, to explore as well, that would be beautiful. We're just coming into the top of the island and there's like a little cut that we're going to make our way through and then down the other side to the anchorage itself. Uh, from the book, the pilot book, it says that the anchorage is actually 22, I think, to 26 meters deep. So it's gonna be a bit of a tricky place to anchor. As we rounded the top of the island, it sheltered us from the wind, leaving just enough to gently sail into the anchorage. It looks like this sheltered bay is also favoured by the local fishing boats or baggins. These boats fish at night and use powerful lights to attract the fish into their nets.
We are here because a long time ago we received a comment below one of our videos from Marco who owns the resort here, inviting us to anchor and offering to fill our water tanks for us. We had lost Marco's contact details, but as we approached he recognised Florence and came out to show us the best spot to anchor and to invite us in for a beer. Marco and Dominique own and run the Tubidac Paradiso Village here on Tubidac Island. This place is a world away from the stress of the city and a very welcome escape. The resort is a quiet haven of traditional bungalows in a beautiful setting, alongside nature and only accessible by boat. The resort blends into the island and as we wandered through the grounds it was clear that the wildlife feel no inhibitions about wandering through here too. We feel incredibly grateful to Marco and Dominique for welcoming us into such a beautiful, safe and relaxing haven. Unfortunately, we can't spend all our time relaxing. Time to catch up on that boat work. Okay, you ready? This is the reality of cruising. There are always things to be done to keep a yacht in good working order. If you stop doing them for a while, they build up and we have to catch up. We check the rig regularly for any wear and tear, which involves a trip up the mast. Oh, and our antifile is wearing out. So this is a very regular job now. Cutting the grass. How bad is it? It's getting really bad. It's getting much further down on the antifile. Normally you get like a strip along the top where it gets lots of light that you normally get growth but as the antifoul ages <laughs> the weed has a much easier time of staying stuck on and it sort of progresses down the boat and it really slows us down yeah we really need to uh, pull the boat out and re-antifoul but you can't do that here we're just going to do the best that we can <laughs> and keep cleaning it keep scrubbing yeah we might even have to stop halfway across the ocean and jump in and scrub it off because we'll be slowed down by it so much but yeah makes at least a knot or a knot and a half a difference if we haven't scrubbed the hull now. Oh. Our gas bottles stored on deck have gone rusty and done this to Florence. So we took them ashore, de-rusted and painted them. But now I have to clean Florence up. Long-term sailors get very excited about seemingly everyday items. Marco is a sailor and understands why we are so happy to be offered the use of their washing machine. No need to do it by hand in the dinghy. We haven't caught much rainwater recently, so we made the most of Marco's offer to fill up our water tanks from their freshwater spring, handily piped to the end of the dock. Unlimited fresh water is a luxury we haven't had since we left Thailand in February 2020. We've been anchored for so long that our snubber has become disgusting. This is the rope we use with a stretchy bungee on it to uh, take the strain off the chain and the windlass when we're anchored. And we've been anchored for so long recently that it's, uh, it's got barnacles and everything growing on it and seaweed. But it's so deep here that we've let all the chain out and we've got a whole bunch of rope out on the end of it as well and because that rope's stretchy we don't need the snubber so it's time to give it a real scrub
after several days of doing boat jobs, we're finally going to get out and climb this hill. Hopefully we get a nice view of Florence from the top. We've been looking at this hill for the last few days. It looks incredibly beautiful, but also very steep. So we're not sure what the climb is going to be like. Did you bring the machete? Whenever we've been away from hiking trails for a long time, we always look at a hill or a peak and we think, man, I miss being up there. We've really got to get ourselves up there. And then we, we have this kind of mental block as to why nobody ever goes hiking on the equator. And especially not up hills. Because <laughs> it's, it's pretty damn miserable. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's disgusting. This is what you look like if you climb a hill on the equator. Stupid idea. You see all those hills out in the distance on mainland Sumatra. They look absolutely stunning. When we were in New Zealand, we went hiking in South Island and we loved being up in the peaks. Um, and here you look at those peaks, we look at those peaks and go, oh, wouldn't it be amazing to get up in the hills and explore and you get the fresh air at higher altitude. On the equator, I still think that air is going to be pretty darn hot. I've gone off the idea, quite frankly, unless we can get a motorbike and get up there or something. I don't fancy hiking. <laughs> Maybe we'll sit in a hammock and fly the drone. <laughs> That's a much better idea. We need a drone with a much better range that we can fly from here, because there's supposed to be tigers, Smartra tigers, in the jungle, in this jungle that we can see over here. Um, we'd love to go and explore over there and, and try and see some of the nature, but obviously because of Covid. Uh, that's not really on the cards at the moment. We're better off staying on this island off the coast where we're more isolated and, and much safer. But uh, okay, I'm starting to appreciate the view now. <laughs> I've cooled down a bit. There are hundreds of fishing boats in sight. Um, some of them are starting to come out now and they, they anchor across the across the bay and they light up at night to attract all the fish but there are hundreds of them and they just about this time of night time in the evening they're starting to all come out and then in the morning they all head back into villages and unload all their fish it's like they're all lit up like christmas tree lights this place is an incredible place to be love the dense lushness of the jungle here and every time I look into the bush, I see something new that I've not seen before. Like this plant here, which I'm pretty sure is a carnivorous uh, fly trap. It's just a pity we've actually got to go get back down to Florence and we probably need to do that before it. the sun goes down too much further. Despite the heat, it was really nice to get out into the jungle. We're lucky that the resort here has a marked trail to the top. 
It's rare to find marked hiking trails in Indonesia. And working up a sweat just makes a cold beer on the dock to watch the sun go down even better. Today we've got a very exciting day. I'm really excited. I haven't actually done this since I was 16 and I tried it one time. And I can't believe that we've sailed halfway around the world and lived on a boat for four and a half years and haven't ever got round to doing this. So yeah, today's a really big day for me. 